Here beginneth the life of St. Nicholas, the bishop. Nicholas, citizen of the city of Patras, was born of rich and holy kin. His father was Epiphanes and his mother, Joanne. He was begotten in the first flower of their age, and from that time forth they lived in continence and led a heavenly life. Then the first day that he was washed and bathed, he addressed himself right up in the basin, and he would not take the breast nor the pap but once on the Wednesday and once on the Friday. And in his young age, he eschewed the plays of Jake's of other children. He used and haunted gladly the Holy Church, and all that he might understand of Holy Scripture he executed in deed and work after his power. When his father and mother were departed out of his life, he began to think how he might distribute his riches, and not to the praising of the world, but to the honor and glory of God. And so it was that one day his neighbor, who then had three daughters, virgins, he was a nobleman, but for the poverty of them together they were constrained, and in very purpose to abandon them to the sin of luxury, so that the gain and winning of their infamy they might be sustained. When the holy man Nicholas knew hereof, he had great horror of this villain, and threw by night secretly into the house of a man a mass of gold wrapped in a cloth. When the man arose in the morning, he found this mass of gold, and rendered to God therefore great thankings, and therewith he married off his oldest daughter. And a little while after this, the holy servant of God threw in another mass of gold, which the man found, and thanked God, and purposed to wait for to know him that had so aided him in his poverty. After a few days, Nicholas doubled the mass of gold and cast it into the house of this man. He awoke by the sound of the gold and followed Nicholas, and anon he kneeled down and would have kissed his feet, but the holy man would not have it and required him not to tell nor discover this thing as long as he lived. And in this time, certain men rebelled against the emperor, and the emperor had sent against them three princes, Napoleon, Ursin, and Apollon. They came into the port Adriatic for the wind, which was contrary to them, and the blessed Nicholas commanded them to dine with him, for he would keep his people from the raven that they had made. And while they were at dinner, the consul, corrupt by money, had commanded three innocent knights to be beheaded. When the blessed Nicholas knew this, he prayed that these three princes would go much hastily to him. When they were come to where they should be beheaded, he found them on their knees, the rider brandishing his sword over their heads. Then St. Nicholas, embraced with the love of God, set himself hardly against the rider, and took the sword out of his hand, threw it from him, and unbound the innocents, and led them with him all safe. And anon he went to the judgment of the consul, and found the gates were closed, which he had not opened by force. The consul came anon and saluted him, and this holy man, having this salutation and despot, said to him, Thou enemy of God, corrupter of the law, wherefore hast thou consented to such great evil and felony? How darest thou look on us? And when he had sore chidden and reproved him, he repented. And at the prayer of the three princes, he received him into penance. After, when the messengers of the emperor had received his benediction, they made their gear ready and departed, and subdued their enemies to the empire without shedding of blood and returned to the emperor, where they were worshipfully received. After this it happened that some other in the emperor's house had envy of these three princes, and accused them to the emperor of high treason, and did by so much prayer and gifts that they caused the emperor to be so full of ire that he commanded them to prison, and without other demand he commanded that they should be slain that same night. And when they knew it by their keeper, they rent their clothes and wept bitterly, and then Napoleon remembered how St. Nicholas had delivered the three innocent knights and admonished the others that they should require his aid and help. And thus as they prayed, St. Nicholas appeared to them, and after appeared to Constantine the emperor and said to him, Where hast thou taken these three princes with such great wrong, and hast judged them to death without trespass? Arise up hastily and command that they not be executed, or I shall pray to God that he move battle against thee, in which thou shalt be overthrown and shall be made meat to beasts. The emperor demanded, What art thou that entered by night into my palace and say such words to me? Who art thou that menaces me? Nicholas said to him, Know that I am Nicholas, bishop of the city of Myra. 
When the emperor heard the life and the miracles of St. Nicholas, he said to the princes, Go forth and yield thanks to God, who has delivered you by the prayer of this holy man, and worship him. Bear him your jewels, and pray him that he threaten me no more, but that he pray for me in my realm unto our Lord. A while after, the said princes went unto the holy man and fell down on their knees, humbly at his feet, saying, Verily art thou the man of God, and the very worshiper and lover of Christ. Nicholas lifted up his hands to heaven and gave thanks and praise to God, and sent again the princes, well informed, into their countries. When it pleased our Lord to have him depart from this world, Nicholas prayed our Lord that he would send him his angels. And inclining his head, he saw the angels come to him, whereby he rendered up his soul and died. The year of our Lord, 343, with great melody sung of the celestial company. Much later on, a man, for the love of his son, hallowed the feast of St. Nicholas much solemnly. One time it happened that the father had to host a dinner, and he called many clerks to his home. The devil came to the gate in the habit of a pilgrim asking alms, and the father commanded his son to give alms to the pilgrim. When he went to the gate, the devil caught the child and strangled him. When the father heard this, he sorrowed strongly and wept, saying, Bright, sweet son, how is it with thee? St. Nicholas, is this my reward for so long having served you? And as he said these words, the child opened his eyes and awoke as though he had been asleep and was raised from death to life. Let us then pray to this blessed saint that he will pray for us to our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed in Seculo Seculorum. Amen.